Can we talk about something real quick that I only because I'm holding it in my hands right now? Am I thinking about it? But can we all <laughs> experience Bucky's, right? Oh, Bucky's oh, is the best. Like we like, and this is revolution. Bucky's has revolutionized going to a gas station. The last time we went, this is not a plug. We're not sponsored by Bucky's, but the last time we went. We spent over a hundred dollars mm. on things Listen, plus gas. The cheese steak burrito, but is the best. There's no part of me that needed this, other than the fact that I knew that my dog would love it. I have sewed this four times no, already. I sewed like from here to here, and you sewed this one today. There's two different sew jobs, and now and now we have another hole in it, and it won't survive. But I keep sewing it because it's just so darn cute. Bucky's is amazing. Love, yeah. You've not been to Bucky's. I tried like crazy to get my son to come to Bucky's with me while he was here, and he didn't want to drive. He hates riding in the car. I ruined him when he was a kid riding in the car, but he's like, I don't want to drive out for gas station. So I'm like, You don't understand. <laughs> I've never been. And I need to go. You've never been? Okay, I want to go. I'm going to pick you up this weekend. We're going to go. Cancel the I'll show, go, ladies go. and gentlemen. I'll go this, this weekend. I can do right. a Bucky's trip. Let's We're do it. We're getting on the road. Can right we film now? it? We Listen, are going. If I was going straight there and then going back home, I would load up on like brisket sandwiches, and brisket. cheesecake burritos, cheesesteak burritos, and like, you know, whatever. Buckets of beef jerky. You can pick up a grill, some handmade I think goods. The best thing, too, is that, that, that little beaver is like always there, like 24 hours a day, wearing a full on, like a character. Like <laughs> yeah, a right? It doesn't matter if you're there at like 3 a.m. or anything else. He's just still standing there, like, mm -hmm. hey, buy some beaver nuggets. Welcome to Bucky's. We got a nice bathroom. Hey, everybody, and welcome to this week's episode of the DVC Show. I'm your host, Paul Krieger, joined as always by my lovely wife, Amy Krieger. Hello. We got John Sakari, a.k.a. Big Fat Panda, a.k.a. I've never been to Bucky's, apparently. Welcome um, home, everyone. This is the man that wears the giant beaver costume at Bucky's, Mr. <laughs> Derek DeBoer. <laughs> hey, now. <laughs> and Jeff Haslam, who I think I'm going to meet with, meet up with in about an hour, and we're just going to leave and go to Bucky's. So, Heck, um, yeah. Let's do it. Let's just make a night of it and uh, go, go there. Can we all just comment on the fact that this is a new show and Derek is still wearing the same shirt? Mark the day. day. Mark because the day. Because it's a continuation of the previous show. I didn't want to make cop my out. head explode. That's a, so, yeah, that's a that's cop a out. Shirt. You know what? Nope. I'll just go change. Goodbye. Oh, First no. time in a long time that we have not seen him uh, change his uniform. So... It's so darn comfy and soft. <laughs> you can order another one on Amazon. I'm sure it'll be here by tomorrow. <laughs> well, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for coming and tuning into our nonsense. As always, if you're back for more from last week, we are talking more of our top controversial Disney and DVC opinions. It was the top 10. We only made it through five in the first episode. So if you missed the first half of this, go back and listen to that one because uh, we did have some fun there and we got into it. Um, and, uh, Jeff may or may not have had a stroke halfway through it. So, um, he was, he was riled up and ready to go. I don't know if the next five are going to rile him up. Um, I, I don't know if you're asleep or if you're thinking about food or I'm hungry. It's late. <laughs> like, I just, my it's, eyes feel like they're glazed over. I'm always, like I, I'm sitting right next to her and like, I feel like we're the same person, but I'm always focused on these seven mm -hmm. screens that I'm looking at to make sure all of this works properly. But then I look at her in the mm -hmm. screen and she's just like, oh. that's that's sandwich. Amy, when she gets <laughs> hungry, she gets the sandwich. Amy, Listen, it's almost eight o'clock. She, she's got her eyes on the spooky nuggets, uh, spooky nuggets. There's some spooky nuggets waiting for us. <laughs> Well, uh, as always, we'll get to it real quick. If you love this content, if you love our nonsense, if you love everything that we share with you about the Disney Vacation Club community, please show some love for our sponsors over at the world of DVC. DVC Resale Market, where you can buy or sell a Disney Vacation Club contract. I hear that Derek is actually jumping on a call right after this at 9 p.m. <laughs> just, uh, just to sell more used timeshare. So at any time of day, he's there for you. Uh, Monera Finance. <laughs> Uh, who will help you finance that DVC resale 
pre-sale contract purchase. Amy's up at 2 a.m. approving your loans. <laughs> no, I'm getting not. that done. Um, <laughs> and then the DVC rental store where you can try before you buy, uh, where you can rent points, rent out your own points, and where we've done it right because we've automated everything. And so it doesn't matter what time you do it. I'll be asleep. And uh, the system will do it for us. And uh, it'll help us on our merry journey. So if it does it right. And that's the, <laughs> that's the ultimate question at the end of the day, but please show some love for our sponsors. Um, you know, they allow us to do what we do. They are our jobs and, uh, um, we, we love them. Yay. Well said. Well we said. talked the top five of our most controversial opinions, uh, last week, and we are coming up on the second five this week. And I feel like they don't get any less spicy. We, we basically kind of, uh, we, we really went for what you guys talk about the most when we listen to you guys rant and rave in our Facebook group and in other places and what the community at large talks about and kicking off this week's five, uh, controversial opinions is theme park pricing increases. We're just going to kick it off with the, the mother of all, the mother of all topics. Um, over the years, Disney does not go in the other direction. Historically, year after year, they raise theme park price tickets. They raise hotel prices. They raise the cost of a point for Disney Vacation Club, um, which just continued to go up. And we're approaching the end of the year, which means we're approaching new year, new prices. And we would imagine that those price increases are going to happen pretty soon and going to happen again. And, um, the question ultimately here is, do you think that Disney's price increases are justified by the experiences they offer by the new lands, by the new parks, by the new things that they bring out, or is it just becoming too expensive for a Disney vacation? Panda, your your eyebrows raised there. I, I'm going to continue to go, but I don't think the price increases are justified at this point. I think they got to offer me something. So, something's got to got to break. I think I think they're pricing out a lot of people, but I'm not going to stop going. So, who's the dumb one? It's me. It's not them. <laughs> uh I'll double down on the question with you. Do you think that what we're hearing about for the future of the parks? Do you think that moves the needle enough? Or sure. if they if if they come up with a villain's land that blows me away, yeah, then then I'm good, I'm good with it. But right now they've they just keep taking away and replacing instead of adding. It's not getting cleaner. It's not it's not getting more pretty. There's problems. So just just imagine, Panda, how much it's going to be by the time villains land actually. Was, so just remember. Took the words out of my mouth right there. Yeah. Yeah. A lot. Uh, Amy, I, know, what are your I thoughts? think it comes down to, oh, okay. you know, Disney, yes, we, we can expect price increases every year. It's, it's always been a thing. Um, kind of to Panda's point, they've really not given us a lot of new. It's been a lot of replacing and, and remixing and rehabbing, um, but they haven't really added a lot of capacity. I think that's where my struggle is with the prices going up, 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 yet it hasn't done what they thought it was going to do, which is to curtail the crowds. And so, you know, we were just there the other day. It was the day before the hurricane hit. It was still massively crowded at magic kingdom. You're, you're not able to do everything at magic kingdom in a single day anymore. And so the fact that that's still the most expensive park in the canon really bothers me because unless you're super duper savvy with genie plus, which we talked about last week, it's just become too complicated, too busy, and I'm just not sure the price increases are doing what they hoped it would do when they initially did it. So, I don't know. I'm. It's not worth it for me. But yet, like Panda says, I'm still going to go. That's that's what I love about this community <clears throat> is that, that, that we will all sit here and say, you know, it's not worth the price anymore. And yet, we just open that wallet right up, and it's just like, here you go. Can't live without it. So, um, I feel, and I feel like that you always hear it every year for Mickey's not so scary and the very Merry Christmas party. So when the prices for those tickets come out, the internet literally explodes with people saying, this is ridiculous. I can't believe it's so much money. This is insane. Followed by a press release, like two minutes later, every day just sold out. <laughs> so it's yeah. like, Pretty you much. Have it both ways. you're still going to go, you're yeah. still going to go, but people will compare which i hear too is that say hey derek 
my family and I went to go see a Broadway play, you know, and it was like $175 for like, you know, a pr pretty good ticket for a play. And that was three hours. So, you know, for us to buy a Disney ticket, like even just a one day pass, hey, we can get there at like 8, 9 a.m. We could stay sometimes until midnight. So for us, you know, we do feel the value. I, I think for people that are, you know, honestly, and most of us are listening to this, you know, repeat visitors. So we remember what the prices used to be and we compare them to how they are now. And they're, they're never, ever going to go down. They will only continue to just, you know, rise in price. But again, Disney's do what they got to do because people are still going. Parks are still packed and people are still going. God, I hate it so much when I have to agree with Derek. You guys know how much that pains me. But <laughs> he just said something that I actually have, haven't really thought of. And that is a good point. When you compare entertainment to entertainment, mm -hmm. $175 to do 12, 14 hours at a Disney park is way better. Like I just tried to buy Dua Lipa tickets last week for <laughs> nosebleed. They were $450. Ow. For nosebleed out in Tampa. So I'm like, okay, <laughs> I'd rather spend 450 and go three days at Universal or three days at Disney than I would mm -hmm. spend that money at a concert. So, yeah. Did that, did that do a leap of ticket come with $440 in cash? Or in <laughs> Don't make me come over there. Don't mess with my do a leap. I think to an extent, see, and I like, we're, I would, I would say that we are budget conscious, you know, mostly like I care when we shop for groceries. I, you know, I compare prices of different brands and things like that. And I clip my little Kroger digital coupons. And but, um, you know, Disney, we, we usually are willing to spend a little more, um, you know, because it is it's a value thing. But at the same time, I do think that, you know, if the prices were were too low then the parks would be more you know what i mean like like pricing is one of their tools to manage crowds um in a way but i don't know it, it's hard and and value is different for everyone you know we we have annual passes obviously you guys all have annual passes we're definitely getting our values worth because we live here and we get to go so often uh but i took my mom oh uh, i think for a birthday last year maybe uh, and oh man, it it pained me to pay over two hundred dollars for a single day Epcot ticket. Yeah. Like, that's yeah, that's painful. But you know, if I'm going on a vacation, I'm going for multiple days. Then the value is you know it's a little less per day. But yeah, so it just it just depends. Uh, CNBC actually did a very interesting article on this not too long ago, just related to the inflation when it comes to Disney. And I would highly recommend that um, you Google it, look up that article. But um, in the article, they specifically said a one day single park ticket to Walt Disney World has climbed on average 5% per year over the past 10 years. Uh, bet between 2014 and 2024, the average cost for a single day Walt Disney World ticket has inflated 56%, Ouch, that's... well above the national inflation rate of 32%. Yeah, so more than double. Yeah, and I think that's I think that's the aspect of it that is is hard so hard to stomach for most people because here we are you know we've we've been in a period of inflation um, that is record breaking, um, and yet this trend is higher. So how, it, it's 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 when do you call inflation inflation and when do you call inflation greed, I guess, yeah. is, is kind of my thought process. Um, <laughs> well, and it, uh, good point. I actually have a object lesson here. Hang on, let me grab it. <laughs> well, it's it's about greed when it's supply and demand, though. No, and it's, a, it's also greed, Panda, like we just talked about. It's the cake bake shopping charge at $8 for a Coke. That's pure well, like, Amy. But like Amy said, if these tickets were less, these parks would be more crowded that we couldn't handle it. Yeah, and I and I, I get that point, but it's not just the park increases that are bothering me. Right, right. I agree. It's not just tickets. Uh, that's, yeah. My 50th anniversary Mickey ears. So the 50th anniversary of Disneyland, 2005. So however many years ago that was, 20? Mm -hmm. Math, because math is hard. $11.50. Well, the oh tag is still on it. The tag is still on it. Whereas now, if I buy a set of Mickey cents. ears, they're like 25 bucks on another 
four or five if you want your name on the back. So it's not just the park increases. If it was mm-hmm. parks and it was crowd control, okay. Yeah. But Magic Bands instead of 15 are now Spare 50. jerseys are pushing yeah. $90. $90. Starbucks yeah. 75, 80 bucks. We could go back to our fast pass discussion that we had in the in the past episode. You know, uh, all of these things are adding up that are affecting the price uh, mm-hmm. of of a Disney Disney vacation. And uh, when asked, our our poll results said eighty two point four percent said it's becoming too expensive. Seventeen point six, which I, I am surprised. There's more people um, sort of saying, you know, it, it is justified given the experience. Um, but uh, the majority are saying that, you know, it, it has kind of inflated out of control. But I don't know that there's any going back from that. No. So that's kind of where we are as we move forward with increasing prices. So when you read that article next month uh, on DVC Fan that the Polynesian Island Tower is no longer 225 but it's 230 or 235 don't be... Well, and Disneyland already announced their price increase for next year, didn't they? Correct. Disneyland ticket prices have already been announced. And, oh, yeah. Uh, Disneyland tickets are so um, expensive. You know, they... I, I love how they sugarcoat it, too. Uh, it's always, you know... Um, what kind of icing do you put on the pig? Um, and so in this case, it was, uh, we didn't, the, the lowest price ticket is still the same. It's still the lowest price, which is somewhere around $100. But there's less days to buy the lowest price ticket. And we've increased the highest price ticket. Yep. And so it's like, uh, I don't know what you're trying to tell me there, but it sounds more expensive. Uh, so. But they are bringing back paint the night. So that is worth the price increase. I'll maybe. throw all my money at them for that. Yep. You know, just sign me up. I swear if it's not there in June, I am going to be so I know. I want to see you so bad. Same. Same. Yeah. We're just going to have to go back again if it doesn't. We should have an electrical parade in June as well. We will. We will have a new parade coming. Um, so that'll be that'll be exciting. And uh, we'll pay more money for it, too. Number seven on our list of controversial opinions. Boy, that, that kicked us off fine. Also, I, I, I just want to put a shout out. I love Jeff Haslam and on the, I just want all of our, I, I want all of our shows to be controversy from now on. Jeff just gets so fired up and, uh, <laughs> and it just shows how much of a Disney fan he truly is because of how much he loves this brand. I'm being honest. I, I love it. I just, and I talk and less. People so. come for me in the comments every week too. And it's, it's, it's great. Well, they, they come in a good way. I just need clarification. <laughs> I think I heard Paul correctly when he was trying to explain that graphic. Did you say it's like putting uh, icing on a pig? <laughs> Lipstick on a pig, <laughs> icing. <laughs> Lipstick on a pig. I'm Definitely always, not icing. <laughs> a, I, I, alliterations and analogies, all of those type of that things. That was not an alliteration. I know it wasn't, but all of these things I mess up uh, historically. <laughs> I get it from a shout out to my band director, Pat Garrett from Wheeling Park High School, Wheeling, West Virginia, because he would come up with analogies that just, they make no sense and yet they completely make sense all at the same same time. So it harkens we, back to your childhood. It does. It harkens back to when Pat Garrett, we would be on marching band and practice and he'd stop us and he'd tell us that it sounded like uh, he was shaving a bobcat's butt in the phone booth. And, 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 and you were just like, it makes sense, and yet it doesn't all at the same time. So the fact that there's a band leader in Wheeling, West Virginia, named Pat Garrett. Like, are you Billy the Kid? Is that really your name? Are you like secretly like <laughs> Billy the Kid's great grandson? Because I feel like all those things just fit into Young Guns. I mean, it's West Virginia. Yeah. Uh, moving on to number seven on our controversial opinions: uh, DVC rental services, um, <laughs> which I'm employed by. So. Uh, <laughs> I'm gonna stay quiet. I'm gonna stay quiet on this on this topic. But uh, we basically asked you, um, what are your opinions on DVC rentals? Is this something that is kind of degrading the member experience? Is it limiting members' access to potential rooms, points, or does it bring value to being a Disney Vacation Club member? Does it bring value? to your membership and uh, give you more flexibility in how you use the points that you've bought. Talk amongst I'll yourselves. Go. <laughs> yeah, I'll go. Go ahead, It Andy. absolutely brings value. I mean, inst- let's say I did run into financial trouble. <clears throat> Instead of selling, 
maybe for a couple of months or for that year, I'll rent out all my points. That's a great option. You know, it's like when you call to cancel something, they'll say, well, can we keep you by doing this? It gives you another option. Yeah, that's uh, I don't know how that could not just be, I don't know how that would degrade anything for me. I've rented points in the past before I was an owner, thought it was great. I think it gives options. Well, and I'll approach it, uh, you know, uh, again, I will add the disclaimer that I work for DBC <laughs> Rental Store. We like paying our mortgage. Um, yes, I, I love my job. And 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 here's here's what I've said historically about and this And buying topic. groceries. <laughs> there are bad actors that have made this topic be a sour taste to some people. Um, go, you know, on Facebook and go into some of these groups and you will find the people that are causing the problems. It's not the average day renter of someone that this year, um, had an unexpected, I have these conversations with people all the time. They had an unexpected expense. They had a medical emergency. They had a family emergency. Mm -hmm. You name whatever that situation, they, they lost their job, right. whatever that situation might've been this year. They need some extra cash and they have 200 DVC points that they need to rent. And they reach out to a company like the DVC rental store and we help them and we give them money for this. <clears throat> on the flip side of that, there are people in private rental groups on Facebook and stuff like that, that have basically turned this into their own commercial enterprise in which yeah. they go in and they snag up the good rooms. They snag up the value studios they uh, at at animal kingdom lodge jumbo house the Kil kilimanjaro rooms they snag up the good dates when everyone wants to go and stay and and those are the people that that the general population gets angry at is because they have snagged those rooms and then they're going and renting them at ridiculous prices on the internet and um so Though that is where I think the, the large majority of anger comes from in this community when it does come to renting. Go ahead, Panda. Why aren't they limiting something like that? Like, why couldn't DVC say, listen, you can rent points, but like three times a year, maybe? I mean, that, does the average person do more than that? And then businesses like what you're talking about would be shut down. One of the big big issues with with this is that uh and it's the timeshare industry in general there there have been some companies that have kind of tried to play around with rules and restrictions when it relates to renting and how you rent your points but the problem that most of these companies have is that uh disney disney vacation club they're the biggest renter of points that there is they are any points that they have, any points that they pull back, um, any points that they buy back, exchange, um, exchange yeah, you cruises. name it, all of these things. They don't just disappear. They don't just vanish. Yeah. Magical they, beginnings. Yeah. They're renting points. They are renting these rooms out. So any cash reservation rooms that you see available uh, for these Disney Vacation Club properties, where's that cash going? It's going into Disney Vacation Club. And yeah. so... They're the biggest renter of points, so they do have to watch as to how they restrict it because they don't want to restrict themselves at the same time. Um, nope. So I will agree with you, Panda. I think that there could be things that they do. There are rules and regulations that prohibit what we call commercial renting, um, in which you know, uh, you know, if you rent, if you rent more than so many reservations, it's gotten vaguer and vaguer over the over the course of the course of time and there's really no defined parameters but there are kind of these outlines as to what is deemed commercial renting um but uh there have been instances in the past in which dbc has basically you know locked down a membership because they believe that someone is doing this on a commercial scale um those things do happen but um you know for the average person you know to your point panda you know a couple reservations a year or if if, if something comes up and you need to you know rent this year's points yeah um, or you can't you know if you can't use your points it's nice to know that you're not you don't just lose them yeah. right you get you can get some value like we when we <clears throat> bought our grand cow contract we we actually weren't able to use the first two years and so you know that would be pretty devastating to lose your first two years of points on a contract that you paid yeah. that premium for oh, and that and that happens so, all the time with, yeah. with people that get um you know i know right now derek i think resale market's kind of running kind of that you know bonus points you know you're not paying annual dues for 
uh, 2024 anymore. So you're getting those bonus points, but a lot of people can't use those bonus points or, you know, they, they're, they're not able to use them before they expire. And so we've seen a lot of those people come to like rental store and it's like, okay, like, you know, um, you know, how do I capitalize on these before I, before I lose them? So it, it is a benefit, um, you know, to, to people in that regard, Jeff, you've, uh, you've been a little quiet through this one. I know it's weird, right? You want to make sure you're really alive. Um, I, yeah, I don't, I don't see any issue with, rent. I, I would like to get to a point where I actually have some points that I could rent because I just keep borrowing and borrowing and borrowing. So I don't know what it feels like to borrow or excuse me to rent, but I would like to one day. The other thing too, and with what you were talking about with the commercial stuff at the end of the day, though, that's still points being used, right? Right. So right. I don't, I don't understand mm -hmm. the anger that much because whether they're using them or somebody else is using them. They're still the same points being used, right? Am I missing something there? No, nope, you're not missing anything there. And I, I think the bigger point that I've made uh, over the years has been, it is beneficial to you. This isn't, you know, I don't, I'm, again, I'm terrible with analogies. Um, you know, this isn't like buying a house and uh, not looking at it or, or so, yeah. I'm, I'm I don't know where you're going I don't know with this. I can't even either. save you. <laughs> Uh, you kind of took off with nowhere to land there. My, but my brain is my brain is kind of fried as we as we get near the end of the night. Um, my point is is that at the end of the day, you are buying this membership, and so you need to educate yourself on what you're buying, and you need to know a lot about this product. You need to listen to shows like this show. You need to read the articles that we have on DVCFan.com because the more you know. The more you know, um, yeah, I'm done. Uh, <laughs> the more you know about the product that you've bought, the easier it will be to use. And I and I do believe that the people that get angry with some of this stuff are the people that go on and they they're trying to book this or that, and it's not available. And then they think it's not available because they see it on a rental site. And you know that's that's not the real reality of the situation. And if you know, if you know the rules, if you know the ins and outs, if you know to be on at this point in time, um, I don't want to say this is the right thing. It almost goes back to the conversation we had about using cell phones in the prior show too, where it's like, unfortunately, this is what we've come to. But the more you know about this product, the easier it will be to use and the better you will use it and the less frustrated you will get with it. So. Well, right. But again, I go back to what I was just saying where, okay, so let's say I book a week at Boardwalk for the opening of food and wine, which is typically one of the harder ones to get, right? Mm -hmm. Well, whether I'm using those points myself or letting somebody <clears throat> else use those points, I'm still booking the same week. You and know what I mean? your points to do with what you want. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Like I'm not taking away somebody else's ability because we have equal ability. Yep. It's just I chose to put somebody else in there rather than myself. You have to play the game with the rules that we've been given. Yeah. And if you're not doing so, then you're behind the eight ball, um, essentially. Well, and you and you have to realize too that you know as a as a Disney Vacation Club guide, which I was for for quite a while. When we used to do the presentations on the cruise ship, or whether you're on land, or whether you're talking to someone on the phone, like that initial first thing is you know you're probably all wondering you know what is Disney Vacation Club, and it was literally part of the script that they taught you was you know hey this is not a timeshare where you're buying a week where you're buying a room, where you're buying a certain time of year, you're buying points, right? You're buying deeded real estate. So like anything else that you can do with deeded real estate, what can you do? Well, you can use it, go on vacation, have fun with it. But hey, you know what? If you're not gonna use it, rent it out. If you wanna let a friend use it, if you wanna let a family member use it, if you wanna will it to your kids or down the road, if you wanna sell it, you can sell it because you're buying deeded real estate. So you can't take out the rental out of the deeded real estate part because like Jeff said, whether someone's going to be booking that room, if I have 200 points every single year, I could choose to go 10 nights a year throughout the whole entire year. I could use to go two weeks during that year. But the point is, whether I'm gonna use the points I bought, Disney only sells so many points are allotted at each resort. So it's not like renters you know, are, are, are making inventory unavailable. That inventory was already available. It was available to anybody. It's just the people that are renting points whether they couldn't use it or whether they're choosing to go ahead and rent it out themselves. That's their right when you buy this. 
Out of over a thousand respondents on our poll that we put up on the DVC Fan Facebook community and on DVCFan.com, 67% of you said that it does maximize ownership um, in terms of being able to rent your points, and 33% of you said it compromises owners owners ability um to use their points and affects dvc availability and uh for me this is another example of you know the the minority um yells a lot louder in the, in the communities um because uh you do hear a lot more of the 33 percent um complaining about uh, this type of stuff um when most members do kind of view it as there is a value there and i i do want to say that you know Again, um, I do work for DVC Rental Store. Um, not trying to, you know, sway any thoughts here. This is, you know, uh, we we just asked this question, and these were the results that we got uh, in terms of um, this. But uh, it is a heavily debated topic that's out there. Yeah, so. for sure. Next up on our list of controversial topics is jumping over to Walt Disney World and Disneyland and talking about attractions and kind of the theme that we've seen Disney do with some of their older attractions more recently, which is kind of retheme them in one way or another, uh, or maybe get rid of them completely. But the question that we asked our audience is that, do you support the reimagining of classic attractions or do you think that Disney should preserve the originals? And this really relates to you know maybe things that walt disney himself touched over over time and what do we do with these things what do we do with things like carousel of progress which i think maybe gets a total of 10 visitors a day that all take a nap um <laughs> derek me yeah. i love carousel of progress <laughs> <laughs> me too me too <laughs> But outside it. of Carousel of Progress, we've got more and more attractions like this that are that are beginning to date themselves and that I'm sure Disney is looking at going, is this is this plot of land appropriate for this as we move forward into the next generation of the Disney parks? Yeah. I think I think I, that Walt's sorry, I think that Walt's vision was that Disney was never gonna be complete, you know, ever. It's not a museum. And, it's not a museum. Yeah. And so, and I used to be one of those people that was like, okay, you know what? Just don't touch Space Mountain, Big Thunder Mountain, uh, Enchanted Tiki Room, uh, and Spaceship Earth. Uh, you know what I mean? Like, don't touch all these ones that I love. It's, but yeah, it's you, not a generic you, question because yeah. it matters on what they do to it. Like, Thunder Mountain's being closed and they're supposed to add the explosions at the end. Is that That's why it's a great closing? addition to me. Assume so. no, For a year? To, That's yeah. a no, no, they also have to replace most of the track i was told uh, but okay. i don't know if that's true but uh yeah it's a big refurbishment but then they're going to add some magic to it but that magic to me is fine uh adding hatbox goes to haunted mansion i think that's great if you can plus peter pan's flight and bring it up to a, a different level great without changing it carousel of progress change the last scene i'd be all for that but if you destroy it completely i would not be you know what i mean Right, but it's it's also too, and before I'm sure Jeff has uh, six hours of thought on this. <laughs> but it's always for each of us. It's such a personal flipping decision. Like for one person's ride that they could give two craps about, it's another family's. Like, oh my god, we have the best memories on yeah, those that's cars, it. Yeah. The cars in the Magic Kingdom, that Autotopia that reeks and loud and stinks up <laughs> the whole area. For every family that looks at that footprint and says, oh, my God, they could really do something amazing here. There's a ton of families that are like, don't get rid of it. Oh, my God, we love that. That was a rite of passage. Someone's gotten kids. engaged on it or, you know. Yeah. <laughs> That's like for me, when they eventually touch Spaceship Earth, I'm going to lose my mind. Just because I love everything about See, Spaceship I used Earth. to feel that way, too. But now I'm like, ready. Change it. Let's go. <laughs> so, well, yeah. That that's kind of where I'm at. And I, as Paul said, I, I am a huge fan of Disney and especially the parks. The parks are my, I have this great book, the quotable Walt Disney. I had to pull it out because he says two things in here. Number one, <laughs> Disneyland is like a piece of clay. If there's something I don't like, I'm not stuck with it. I can reshape and revamp. And he also says, whenever I go on a ride, I'm always thinking of what's wrong with the thing and how it can be improved. That's the guy that created all this. So none of yeah. this Walt wouldn't want you to touch anything because mm -hmm. it's, it's crap. He was the first one in line when something needed to be changed. My thing is I don't necessarily have a problem with 
certain classics going away. And it's hard to find the line. And we probably every one of us has a different point of view of where that line is. But I think Disney themselves can know where that line is based on attendance, based on attraction. You know, we talked a lot about the country bears when they changed, you know, Carousel of Progress is another one. None of those theaters are ever full, even the busiest day. Tom Sawyer's Island is always like this weird oasis of nobody going over there, except for the people that really love it. But at some point, Disney has to take a step back and say, are we keeping this for the 12 people that really love it? Or is this better utilized for everybody? And that's where I am at. Things always are going to get dated. Figment, Spaceship Earth, Carousel of Progress. You know, all these things that have... Peter Pan's Flight, I went on that for the first time. The wait time is so ridiculous for what that (laughs) ride is. And I know people love it, and I love them for loving it. I agree. But there's better technology now. They can still make a really great Peter Pan ride. Keep some of that, the aspect of it, but make it for the new audience. Because I'm sorry, my grandkids are going to go on this thing and go, Dad, I rode better rides at Six Flags, you know, Grandpa, whatever. So I know it's hard to find the line, and I know it's hard for people to let go of the past. But there's way too many cool things that other theme parks are doing that Disney can implement and still keep the nostalgia without letting things just go into mothballs. And and to that point too, I think that other theme parks are doing it well and uh, paying homage to the old ride at the same time. You know, yeah. uh, I think universal does a very good job with that. They, especially with some of the rides that they build, um, they, they put little Easter eggs all over the place and it's like, it becomes a game to kind of see those Easter eggs and kind of remember that, that historic ride that, that maybe is no longer there, whether it's jaws or whether it's back to the future, you know, something, uh, and Disney's done that over time. You know, Disney's done a lot of good, you know, Easter eggs, but, um, you know, I, I, I do kind of agree with that, with that general mindset of, you know, uh, we have to move forward, but we can do so kind of tastefully as we reimagine. Uh, probably and one of my the big more... Thing, sorry, Paul, while you're bringing up the slide really quick, I just want yeah. to touch one more thing. I have no problem with certain rides being revamped. You know, I went to the Country Bears again the other day. I laughed a lot. So my initial opinion of it has changed a little bit. My thing is, is we still need the added capacity that we've been begging for for 20 mm-hmm. years. That's my problem. I don't have a strong opinion one way or another, whether they change Space Mountain or not. My back would say, yes, change it. <laughs> my heart says, no, don't. <laughs> but where's the where's the added capacity? Where are we putting yeah. all these new people that they're bringing in? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Of the of the polls that we've done as part of this uh, these controversial thoughts, uh, this is probably the one that, surprised me more than anything 58.4 percent said reimagining uh classic attractions wow. um and 41.6 percent said keep the originals um wow. i really thought that this would at least be flipped i kind of knew it had to be close uh, but the fact that the tide is turning here and i think more people are seeing that and i think more people are maybe seeing that disney's being a little bit more delicate with these decisions um so well, and i think that the, the disney fan base in general is changing you know you do have, you know, the people that have been coming for a really, really long time. Those people are getting older. So you you have the younger people coming in that maybe don't have the same connections to Tom Sawyer's yeah. Island, Enchanted Tiki Room, you know, that some of the older generations yeah. have had. And you have you have a lot of older people that also, you know, are you were used to prices being a lot lower that feel like it got too expensive. So stop going. You know what I mean? So I think I think that that you have a like kind of a newer generation coming into Disney. And so that's yeah. why you're going to have people that are more geared towards let's have, let's have revamped, let's have new, let's have better technology. Well, um, and I think you would get a different answer if you pulled Disney world people separate from Disneyland. From Disneyland. Yeah. Yeah. Because Disneyland, you can't touch anything out there. Universal can do whatever they want because there is no nostalgia at that park, right? They can, you can change yeah. whatever you want that nobody cares. But man, you change the tiki room at Disneyland and people are going to come. Rioting, rioting in the streets. <laughs> uh, I'll take this one degree further. Uh, does anyone's opinion change if I say they are removing Muppets for Monsters, Inc.? Yeah? Honestly, no. Panda says yes. Yeah, I, I 
think that would be a i wish they would reimagine muppets 3d and update it rather than get rid of it altogether so okay. that's not really okay. reimagined see that that's, that's my a, point though panda's old <laughs> <laughs> I'm just no, no, she's no, no, but right. I do have a nostalgia. In 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 all honesty, Amy, you're right. I do have a nostalgia for the Muppets. Now, but, how but my thing is is my argument to that is the technology of 3D in general has just kind of gone away. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, yeah. I understand. I think Muppets need a place in the park. Absolutely, 100. percent I don't think it needs to be a 3D movie in the same spot. Oh, I agree. I wish they would take that Billy, make it a dark ride with Muppets or something. That would but be great. I wish it would be still. Hannah, Muppets. how old were you when you started coming to the Disney parks? Five. See, I think we're getting less of those. Like, like I didn't start coming to Disney until I was in my twenties, and I I'm starting to see people back home and wheeling that are are just getting to Disney for the first time and getting hooked and yeah. they're my age. You know what I mean? So I think we're starting to see just some shifts in the in the clientele. Clientele, yeah. Yeah. It is amazing that some things are still the same from when I was five. Like, you know, the tiki room now it's changed, but it's kind of similar. So that's uh it's cool. They put the they put the old icing on the pig on that one, I think. <laughs> I'm done. I quit this show. <laughs> uh, number nine, we're nearing the end here of uh, these topics. Uh, and, um, you know, we're, we're not letting off the gas. DVC maintenance fees, annual dues. The question was, are DVC maintenance fees becoming too high? Or do you think they are reasonable for the quality of the resorts? And uh, there is not one that I think... <sighs> Kind of hits the nail on the head of a lot of people's thoughts recently when it comes to Disney Vacation Club. Um, you know, the, the costs of annual dues rise year after year after year, um, you know, and, and we continue to see those. And if you, you know, a lot of people that are spreadsheet warriors do the annualized, you know, increase and sort of say, hey, 20 years from now, your annual dues is going to be this, uh, which is a crazy okay. thought to think about. But it could be the reality that we mm -hmm. might see, um, you know, something has to pay for these things. But do you think that the quality of service um related to what we're getting at these properties uh, warrants those increases or the upkeep of these properties uh, warrants those, those increases. Uh, Derek. Yeah, I do. I mean, I was just doing the math on my, on my phone and um, I literally was going, okay, I got 170 points at the boardwalk that I've had since like 1999. My dues are 1400 bucks a year. That's it. That's all I pay. So when I go stay on Disney property, when I go stay in deluxe resorts, when I go to Disney's, you know, Vero Beach three three times a year, when I'm at the Polynesian, when I'm at the Grand Floridian, when I'm at the Wilderness Lodge, I can do probably 10, nine, 10 nights a year on my points. So break it out, do the math. It's like 140 bucks. You can't stay at a crack infested hotel on 192 <laughs> for $140. This is literally $140. I'm staying at the Polynesian, the Grand Floridian, Vero Beach. I'm doing all that. So for me, absolutely the value is still there because if you didn't have points, it's not like a Polynesian room is 200 bucks. Oh, you're only saving like 20, 30 bucks. Polynesian room's like seven, 800 bucks a night. I'm in that room for like 140. That person that paid cash goes, how the heck did you get this room for 140 bucks? You're like, oh, I bought Disney Vacation Club like 20 years ago. All I pay now are the dues. I broke even on the purchase price. So that's it. So again, if you're going to go to Disney, the value to stay in deluxe resorts for, you can't even get the all, you can't even get a, a, a value resort these days. Pop Century, someone told me they just booked it, was 250 bucks a night, plus 12.5% tax. So my opinion, 100%, yes, the value is dead. Wifey? <laughs> um, I think value is going to be different depending on when you bought. So you know, Derek, yeah. Derek bought, well, how many years did you say? 1920s. <laughs> I, for the record, I didn't say you were old that time. Panda, sorry, Panda, Panda. Really I not attended old, Panda. a presentation via stagecoach. And we went to learn about the magic of these. So obviously someone who bought early or at a better price is, is getting a better value or, you know, for our Polynesian points, we got a good deal on that, you yep. know, year and a totally. half or whatever go. So, so the value is a little different there because, because, you know, annual dues are part of the value, but your purchase price is as well. Um, but anyway, uh, it's, you know, Derek's right. 
especially when you look at like, yeah, annual dues go up every year. You know, we see increases anywhere from point something percent to like seven percent it just depends on the resort and not not every resort is going to go up by seven percent every year you know it if it went up by seven percent it usually is a lot lower you know the next year it just depends but if you look at the prices of hotel rooms um you know hotel rooms are really you know really 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 expensive you know i can't do you remember what the polynesian tower cash room was a lot of money. Um, it was it was ridiculous. It was but a lot of money. If you look at the cash rooms for these deluxe resorts, um, or even like like off property, you know, it wasn't crack infested or anything, but we stayed at the JW Marriott um this year for our was it for our anniversary? And we had a uh, like a Marriott credit because you know we, we have a Bonvoy credit card, so yeah. we get points every year. Yeah, we get so, like a credit. So it was a free stay because we used our points, but we still had a resort fee that was what? It was like $50 it, it was like a 50, night. And then parking fee was, plus parking. was like $50 a night. So, you know, if we had paid cash for that room plus the resort fee plus the parking fee, you know, that's that's expensive. And, and instead, we can use our DVC points, yeah. which over time, you know, we we get that value. You know, we're not we're paying a lot less. Our, I I. I I see and pay the annual dues bills every year. So I'm the one that like gets sticker shock year after year. The problem with us though, historically has been add on itis more than it's been the sticker shock of uh, annual dues bills going up is the fact that we keep adding points for some reason or another. And uh, that is why our annual dues uh, has significantly yeah, we, climbed over that the needs years. To stop. But, uh, yeah, yeah, <laughs> that needs to stop. I think I think 2024 we will say we we will We're not we have, we have not added any points. any points until Disney builds Coronado Springs. So um, that will that will happen. All right, Jeff, we got about an hour left. So go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> no, I was just gonna. Say, I actually, I think it varies resort to resort a little bit. Correct. That's the only thing I would add. You know, I don't think the twelve bucks and fifty cents or whatever they're getting at the cabins is the same that I'm getting for my nine bucks and whatever at Old Key West. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But overall, I don't have a huge problem with where my dues are at. I know that that's going to be an increasing thing, but like what's already been said, so are hotel rooms going to go up. And if you're going to come to Disney, it's just the cost of doing business. So. I, I'm fine with it, and it, I, and I, we got a big dues increase a couple years ago because they started paying cast members more, which I have zero problem with. So, mm-hmm. oh, before before you move the panda, I want I do want to add something that Jeff just reminded me of. So we went, we went. I thought to, you were going to call him old again. No, he's so look how young he looks like. He's younger than me. You did compliment him on being young. Not too long ago. I know. And then I you just called him old you. on today's show. Somebody so. else, somebody commented and was like, Panda looks We've so called young. Derek old before, so I'll take it this time. <laughs> um, I'm old. Yeah, do you remember I'm that older. one time you replaced Derek on the screen with a picture? I did it with Statler and oh, Waldorf. You. I did it. Yeah, with okay, <laughs> the Muppet guy. <laughs> so, anyway, um, so we took we took Paul's mom to Vera Beach uh, August, two months ago. And as we were walking along the beach, it was just, it's, it was very evident that beachfront properties see a lot of wear and tear. Um, yeah. You know, a lot of, a lot of rust, a lot of you know, salt buildup, uh, you know, a lot of just everything. And when you walk by Vero Beach, Disney's Vero Beach Resort, it is nearly immaculate. Yeah. The roof looks immaculate. The, the the exterior looks immaculate, especially when you compare it to all of the buildings around it. Um, and obviously, it's going to take a beating because it's on the coast. Um, so you know, and I and that was the one of the things that Paul's mom, as an outsider of DVC, kind of pointed out to us: like, look how pretty this Disney Resort looks compared to all the other buildings along this shore. Like, you can tell that it's Disney. You can tell that it's upkept by Disney. Um, so I will give them that, like, you do see that, you know, when you, I swear to goodness, every time we walk around old Key West, they're power washing something like literally every time. (laughs) So like you do, like, I know the rooms take a beating, but people are in them all day, every day, you know, except for when housekeeping comes in, 
Um, and if you don't report, you know, things, sometimes they don't get, get seen. So definitely report, you know, things that need fixed. Um, but they are taking really, really good care of those buildings. So and that's I'll, all I want to say. I'll be really fast. Agreeing with what Jeff said, resort to resort. I own at the Riviera. If you asked me how my dues are doing, I think they're doing fine. We went to the two bedroom suite over at Animal Kingdom in the Jumbo House, and I would have put my hand out and said, you robbed my, <laughs> my money. Give it back because that room was not up to a Ramada Inn on I-92. Yeah. 192. It was, it was horrible. No, I yeah, uh, I completely agree with that. It it needed refurbished yeah. like Bay, yesterday. Bay Lake nope. owners probably would be in the same camp um, mm -hmm. right now. And before that, it was Boulder Ridge. Um, mm -hmm. You know, luckily those those are getting refurbished. But this coming, yeah. they're two they years behind be though. They need to they up are that behind. refurbishment mm -hmm. at least a year or two because what I saw was not acceptable. Yeah, yeah. Which yeah. I agree with, but if they're going to update them mm -hmm. faster, your dues are going to go up faster. Yeah. So you need to be prepared for that offset. If that's okay with people, then that's great. Yeah. But right now they have a schedule and that schedule is what the dues have worked into it. So if you want it more yeah, frequently, bit... then you're going to be willing to be pay more. We used the term many years ago of, um, you know, DVC being deluxe adjacent. And I think that's the question, you know, is, is what direction do we go in? Do we go deluxe? Are we the premium property? Are we, you know, the best of the best? Are we, um, you know, immaculate? Um, which Jeff, to your point, you know, we would increase the refurbishment schedule and those, those amenities and everything are going to cost you more <laughs> in annual dues, or are we deluxe adjacent where we accept some of these realities, which is that, uh, we do at the end of our refurbishment cycle, we're going to look a little rough. If you're boardwalk, you're going to smell a little musty. Um, and, uh, but then you're going to get refurbished and, uh, you know, kind of get a new, uh, get a new refreshment uh, put in there. And the only intangible to this that comes to mind for me is what we mentioned uh, again in, in, a, in the prior show, which is the effect that Disney actively selling the property has on the upkeep of that specific resort. And I do think that plays uh, a factor in this that, that we will never probably know about. Mm -hmm. But, you know, I, I think that those properties oh, I get watched, more and more. I watched off. them vacuuming I the that, balconies so. at Riviera with a vacuum cleaner. Like, you're not going to see that at, at Kidani and Jumbo House. <laughs> 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 so. In terms of our poll results for annual dues, 60.9% said wow. the annual dues were reasonable Please. for the quality Please. of the resort. Please, TVC watches this. No. And 39% said that they were too high. So, Take it off. Take off the graphic. They're going to see it. They're going to see it. <laughs> <laughs> They're going to be concerned and charge us more? <laughs> oh, absolutely. No? These That's... people, 60% are fine with it. <laughs> Increase, increase, increase. Get more money. No. Moving into our final topic of the night um, and going back to just Disney in general. This is one that uh, I hear so many people talk about, but it is it's been a little bit quieter uh, since it since its return. But the Disney dining plan, um, the, the Disney dining plan used to be like the, the mandatory thing that you added onto your Disney vacation because, you know, you got all this free food and you didn't have to worry <laughs> about, about paying for it. But um, there is a, a renewed debate these days as to whether it's a better value for, to get the Disney dining plan or to simply pay out of pocket for meals. Now, I will add to that if you're eating primarily at the Cake Bake Shop, this argument probably... No, it's probably flips. signature. It's probably two credits for that. Could you imagine? <laughs> no, the egg sandwich is like six credits. <laughs> but um, uh, some some people do argue that the Disney dining plan offers more convenience and savings, while others choose the pay by pay as you go method, um, especially if they don't eat so many meals a day or something like that. So the question is, do you prefer using the Disney dining plan, or do you think paying out of pocket offers the better value? Amy Krieger. Oh, a hundred percent paying out of pocket, uh, especially for the vast majority of members that either have annual passes or have some kind of direct benefits. You know, you're, you, there's no discount with the dining plan. You pay the full price at least, you know, there's discounts at table service, um, at most of them. 
And remember, we did that one dining. Yeah, we did the show. So, and I don't think any of us came out ahead. Of, oh, Paul came out ahead, but you. I did, and Jeff. But you Jeff was very strategically. Close. See, here's the thing with the dining plan. I was strategically just eating everything in right. sight. In in reality, I would be a blimp. If you, <laughs> in reality, you and I don't eat like that anymore. We might go somewhere and just get a couple appetizers and enjoy those. You know what I mean? Um, we don't always ha have to have this structured, like, you know, this meal with, with an appetizer and an entree and a dessert and an alcoholic drink. And, and I don't even drink enough alcohol to make that worth it. Um, but at the end of the day, I lost my train of thought. <laughs> at the end of the day, you just, it doesn't, you know what I mean? Like, you feel when you have it, you feel yeah. like you have to get the more expensive entree to make it worth yes. your while yes. when that's, yes. that might not be what I want. I like pasta and pasta is generally like one of the cheaper things compared to like a big steak. You know what I mean? So Many... yeah. Go ahead, I'm sorry. I mean, go ahead. I yeah. No, go. I'm completely lost my, <laughs> she's no, thinking about chicken tenders right. right now. Many moons ago when I was a travel agent at Liberty travel in New York, Disney would come and train us. And one of the things was the dining plan and Disney themselves would always say, guys, Make sure your clients know this is for convenience, not value. Yeah. Most people are not saving money on this. And it's still true today. Mm -hmm. Yeah. A lot of people have leftover credits, I notice also. Oh, and Absolutely. that would happen to us. Credits for days. Yep. Yeah, it's yep. for and then we would spend them all on a bunch of junk, like at the stores, like goofy candy and yeah. right. when we probably, when we moved from Wheeling to Florida, there were there were like Rice Krispie snacks in our that we had to throw away that that we have had for like because yeah I'm so, I'm one of those people that don't believe in expiration dates really I I just <laughs> think oh, I, I realized that when we went out to eat I remember there yeah. were things I was looking at and Paul just took it <laughs> I mean yeah it's what just, doesn't kill you makes you stronger yeah, yeah but some of those prepackaged things they'll live forever you know they're they're gonna they're gonna be around when we go full Wally and the cockroach goes into the Twinkie, like that's, that, gonna that's just going to be a nuclear holocaust and Paul's going to be the only one walking out like, he, he survived. <laughs> <laughs> I ate all those old Rice Krispie treats. <laughs> Jeff, they I know you're a spreadsheet them. guy and I remember from when we had the, the uh, dining plan conversation. Um, so are you team dining plan or are you team? I am not. And plan? you should link that dining plan show in the show notes here so that people can go and watch it because we covered it in pretty good detail. But yeah, I'm... Yeah. I'm a strong proponent of no on the dining. It would almost be better if they just said, if you booked a package through Disney, once you got to a certain level, you get a $500 gift card for yeah. food or something. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like the dining plan just doesn't, mm -hmm. it doesn't do what and let's, people think it does. Let's not get into free dining. That is not free. No. <laughs> Derek, yeah. surprised. Yeah, great. Derek, dining. are you surprised at all by these results? 91, this is probably the, the, the largest spread uh, of the night. 91.5% paying out of pocket. Not surprised because our audience is incredibly smart. As I yeah. talked to them. <laughs> They're incredibly smart. They know. This, I mean, the, the, the dining plan, is, it's not a sham. Some, some people like it just because they feel like, oh, it's convenient. But again, it all goes back to you're eating stuff you may not even want. You know, when, when we did that show, you know, Paul was spending money on, you know, like he bought like a lobster hat and then it was like, <laughs> it was like, what are you doing? He's like, well, I got the dining plan. So, <laughs> so people are getting stuff that, that, you know, you a don't lot want. of you know, wasted food. Yeah. yeah and it's just a lot of unwasted food. And I think too, because you have a dining plan that you kind of spend your trip at the mercy of the dining plan. So you kind of make your reservations like, okay, so we got to do a big fancy dinner. So you can't, just relax on vacation because you're mm -hmm. at Epcot and then all of a sudden someone says, oh my God, we got dining reservations over at Animal Kingdom because we booked it because we bought the dining plan. So we have to yeah. use it. So, no, not a fan. Not a fan. Yep. And, I, I, and I, I'll end by saying that I always felt on the dining plan and I, I still to this day because the question is back now it's like the lead question when you go into the restaurant and you sit down and they yeah. greet you at your table and it's, are you on the Disney dining plan? And if you say yes, yep. I don't feel like they look at you the same way. Uh, no. and, and I hate I, to I, say I, that. I can guarantee that because Tatum just finished, you know, we've talked about this, the college program. She worked at um, Mara at the Animal Kingdom Lodge, and she told us they hate it. They absolutely hate the dining plan. Yep. 
Even at a quick service or just in general? Everywhere. Uh, my Every waitress. Works in food and, ser- food and beverage okay. cannot stand the dining plan. Yeah. I when I used that. to... When I used to come on vacation, I had the dining plan. Our waitress loved it because she was still getting 18% and she would make yeah. sure we got the maximum of yeah. everything. I said, but I don't want a fruit plate. She goes, don't worry about it. I'm going to put it on your table. You get it anyway. So I'm surprised nobody liked it. And Mara, isn't that a buffet? Why would they not like it? No, it's yeah. quick service. Quick service. That's oh, that's right. Boma. I'm thinking they, of Boma. Yeah. Took away but the Panda, to your point, yeah, gratuity yeah. is no longer included. So, um, Oh, that's in, why. In today's okay, that yeah, mm-hmm. so that's the difference between then and now. Okay. If that was the case, still, sense. yeah, every server would absolutely love it. They they loved feed, it. Yeah, they feed you, you know, as mm-hmm. much as as you you could and eat. Do we want and it, it might, or not? It might change our mind about it if if gratuity was included. And it I, could. I, I yeah. think that that difference. We we just came back. Um, you know, we just came back from a Mediterranean cruise and being in Spain. And I got to tell you that the culture over there. Oh, the food is uh, so first cheap. off. The food is so cheap. <laughs> The quality of the food is so cheap, but the tipping culture. No, good. You mean the quality is good? You said the quality was. Oh, the quality was yeah. good. Of the food. Yeah, the food's amazing. Absolutely, <laughs> some of the best food. Fresh ingredients, amazing food. You know, even it, you walk into a place that just looks like it's going to be sketchy on the side of the road, and it's the best food that you've had in France. Um, but, just described being friends with Jeff. You just. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I mean, just uh, we've taken. The, the, tipping culture. the tipping culture, the gratuity culture to a whole new le- level. No, I, I got asked if I wanted to leave a tip when I bought a t-shirt at the Styx concert. <laughs> and I was like, <laughs> oh, that's, that's. What you're saying, they don't do that in Europe? It's not. No, no tipping is not a no. thing in Europe. It's typically it's not, not. Yeah. So there's no, um, when you go to and check out like the server, first of all, one really big different thing is they don't take your credit card away from you. It's, they all have things that they bring to the table yeah, and yeah. they do it right there and they print out your receipt and, and then there's nowhere to leave a tip even it's like not, you could, it's we, not a question. There were a couple, there were a couple times, times we had we really did. good. We yeah. left some, a couple euros. But and then, like, even, even in the taxi, you know, we we handed him like a 20 euro and it was like 14 and he gave us back. He handed us back change. You know what I mean? So it's just not. It's a different. And they're, and they're in no rush to have you get out. of. Oh, there. yeah. Like, that are, is so true. There are so many times where we've been in restaurants in Europe where we'll literally sit down and then they do the check and they do all this. Then they'll put like a bottle of like, you know, some kind of a liquor on the table with like sipping glasses and just go ahead and sit where as opposed to you know you go to like a place like ohana and it's like here's your noodles here's this here's this, this. Go, go, go. get out yeah you <laughs> literally have to ask for the check like yeah. they do not bring it until you ask for it they yeah. consider it rude to bring the check before you're done with the meal yeah yeah, yeah. well there you go Th- those are our 10 controversial disney and DVC topics. Uh, we did five on the last show. So again, if you missed that, go back, we'll listen to the last show, watch the last show. We had some fun there. And we did five on this one. And uh, I will just say, uh, just from my perspective, I loved these shows. I love doing both of these. Me too. So, this was good. Was if fun. you have other controversial topics or other controversial opinions, put those in the comments and let us know so that we can come and have Jeff talk for two hours <laughs> yet again and uh, give him... Give give him some uh, discussions. Uh, to, Check out that other dining show, like Jeff said. It's a I'm that's another good fired. one. The dining show was a was a good show, and I still do want to do the dining plan just for like I a, do. a like small the, weekend yeah. trip or something. That'd be fun, just to see uh, how much I can eat. So, uh, but that'll do it. <laughs> that'll do it for this week's episode of the DVC show. Um, we hope you enjoyed it, and we will see you all next Monday. <laughs>